engines here at Relativity are manufactured starting at initial design release from our engineering partners. The majority of our parts are powder bed printed. So that means they go through our PBF powder bed fusion team. PBF, uh, you can overcome the challenges of getting a part quickly. When a rocket engine is in its development phase, generally the parts are very high in complexity, but you're producing them at a pretty low volume. This puts you pretty low on the priority list for castings and forging companies. This is where PBF really reigns supreme, where you're able to produce these very complex geometries rapidly at a very high quality and with material properties that are equivalent to raw product. Rapid iteration benefits our engine manufacturing program because we can actually try out and get through testing many, many different designs prior to needing to lock anything in. Because there are no fixed tools or casting molds, we are able to change many printed features in our as-printed model, produce multiple different versions, often given different part names or nicknames, and test all of those different versions either at component level or integrated onto the engine before we have to down-select to a final version. So generally, your part will start as a CAD model. It will then get put through a PBF slicing software, which cuts your CAD model into many, 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 many different slices. These slices can range uh, from 40 micron all the way to 100 micron. That sliced CAD model ends up getting sent to the machine. Here, the machine tends to have, in a very simplified diagram, a powder dispenser, a build plate, and an overflow dispenser. So your powder, each layer, uh, your powder will go up while your build plate will go down. A recoder arm then comes to spread powder all across your build plate, at which point the lasers in the machine will start lasing depending upon that slice in the CAD model. You keep repeating this and then you build your part additively up uh, based on all the slices from your CAD model. A really good example that showcases powder bed fusion's quick iteration would be the GG injector. We were able to trial out many different element geometries to try to find the highest performance one. Every GG injector had the same machined housing and we were able to use additive to swap out different designs for the actual elements. This way we were able to try out different element geometries in parallel to find the highest performing one. The traditional method would have taken thousands and thousands of parts to come all together to create one injector pack. But like by utilizing additive manufacturing, we are able to make all of that to two, three parts. They are produced, printed, depowdered, cut off the build plate, inspected, and then handed over to our machine shop organization. There they take the as printed part and they machine it into the part that we accept here at the propulsion integration floor. There we do all of the finishing passes, bolt holes, sealing surfaces, final checks and dimensions go through precision inspection. We take the part here on the prop floor and we integrate any valves, helicoils, other components that we need. And then final assembly happens where we bring all of those sub-assemblies together. So things like your aux pump and your fuel pump, your TCA, and you assemble into one final engine before we ship. The real power of iterative design for us is that it allows us to fail quickly. We wanna learn as much as possible, as early as possible, to reach our ideal qualifiable engine as quickly as possible. So in being able to test many different designs, many different configurations quickly without needing to completely retool our shop every time we get test learnings, we're able to get to that end state perfect engine all that much faster. In under two years, we went from sizing A on R to now having completed a mission duty cycle of the engine. We gathered a ton of data quickly and accumulated in a successful MVC.